हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज पार्ट फोर्थ इंपॉर्टेंट फार्मूला एंड कॉन्सेप्ट फॉर गेट ट्वेंटी सो वी विल सी इन दिस वीडियो द एस टी ग्रेन साइज सो एस टी ग्रेन साइज नंबर दैट इज स्मॉल एन इज रिलेटेड विद द नंबर ऑफ ग्रेन्स दैट यू कैन काउंट इन हंड्रेड एक्स मैग्नीफिकेशन दैट इज कैपिटल एन बाय द रिलेशन ऑफ कैपिटल एन इज इक्वल टू 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 दी पावर स्मॉल एन माइनस वन वेयर कैपिटल एन रिफर्स टू द ग्रेन पर इंच स्क्वायर एंड स्मॉल एन इज द एस टी एम ग्रेन साइज नंबर सो वी कैन सी दिस फार्मूला लाइक कैपिटल एम अपॉन हंड्रेड होल स्क्वायर इन टू ग्रेन पर इंच स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू 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 दी पावर एन माइनस वन वेयर एन रिफर्स टू ग्रेन पर इंच स्क्वायर एंड दिस स्मॉल एन रिफर्स टू एस टी एम ग्रेन साइज नंबर एन एम इज द एट विच मैग्नीफिकेशन वी नीड टू रिक्वायर दिस ग्रेन पर इंच स्क्वायर दिस इज द मैग्नीफिकेशन so the in the previous slide the formula is given at 100x so we can see here 100 this will come out like n is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 at 100x so in the question if it is given that calculate the number of grain per inch square at 100x then we we can use this formula directly if it is given like at uh, any other magnification like 200x or 50x something then we use this formula and we also need to keep in uh, mind like if it is asked in mm grain size in case of mm then we use 1 inch is equal to 2.54 to 10 to the power minus 2 meter so this is 25.4 mm and if it is asked like in centimeter then we can use 2.54 centimeter so we can convert like this and there is also one more relation between the grain diameter and grain per inch square so d is equal to 1 upon under root n so this also we can use now we will see the hall patch relation so the uh, strength increment associated with the grain boundaries is usually described in terms of the well known hall patch relation so this is the relation sigma by is equal to sigma not plus k upon under root of d where sigma by is the yield stress sigma not is the frictional stress which includes contribution from solutes and particles but not from the dislocations and k is the strengthening coefficient a constant specific to the each material also known as the locking parameter and d is the grain size so this is the direct hall patch relation where if we decrease the grain size the yield strength of the material will increase but reverse to this inverse hall patch re relation we will see if we are decreasing the grain size d less than 20 nanometer to be very specific then the strength of the material sigma by will directly proportional to the grain size like if we are decreasing the d then sigma by will also decrease if we are uh, using this inverse hall patch so this is the relation between the inverse hall patch and this is the relation for this hall patch relation now we will see the rule of mixture for the for calculating the young modulus in composites so the effective young modulus by c or we can also call it ec of the composite material parallel to the fiber so the longitudinal fiber we will use the formula by c is equal to by f dot b f plus by m dot v m and uh, effective young modulus uh, by c of the composite material perpendicular to the fibers in case of transverse fiber by c is equal to 1 upon by f dot b f plus by m dot this is for matrix vm so we will use this where by c is the elastic modulus of the composite by f is the elastic modulus of the fibers and by m is the elastic modulus of matrix vm is the volume fraction of matrix and bf is the volume fraction of fibers 
here we will see that how the elastic behavior in case of longitudinal loading elastic behavior of composite in longitudinal loading so let us consider the elastic behavior of continuous and oriented fiber composite that is loading in the fiber alignment so it is also called isostrain like this is the direction of fiber this is the matrix this is the fiber and this is the loading direction so here this is the condition of isostrain condition strain of composite strain of fiber and strain of matrix so this condition is also known as isostrain condition and it is also uh, different different names like isostrain condition zero angle force condition and longitudinal parallel to the fiber condition voigt model and upper bound condition so in all these conditions if it is being asked that elastic behavior of com of composite in longitudinal loading or uh, isostrain or zero angle condition or voigt model or parallel to the fiber and upper bound we will use the formula of this ec is equal to em vm plus ef dot vf this is for matrix this is for fiber so we will use only this formula so in this case we will see the elastic behavior of composite in transverse loading a continuous and oriented fiber loaded may be like this in the matrix and the loading direction is this so the fiber is oriented to the loading direction at a 90 degree so we will see here that the sigma c is equal to sigma m is equal to sigma f equal to sigma so this is also called the iso stress condition and uh, to calculate the elastic modulus of composite in transverse loading this is also the name for this and it is also this race model and perpendicular to the fiber condition these are also the synonyms for this condition and transverse loading so the formula will be here 1 upon ec is equal to vm upon em plus v of f upon e of f which is elastic modulus of composite elastic modulus of matrix elastic modulus of fiber this is the volume of matrix this is the volume of fiber so we can calculate the elastic modulus of composite in case of transverse loading with this formula in this slide we will see the this chornev rule so the time required for a simple casting to solidify completely can be calculated using this rule so this rule shows the time required ts is equal to b uh, multiplied by v by a to the power n where v is the volume of the casting represents the amount of heat that must be removed before freezing occurs and a is the surface area of the casting in contact with the mold represents the surface from which heat can be transferred away from the casting and n is a constant so usually n is taken as 2 and uh, this b is the mold constant and uh, secondary dendrite arm spacing 
एस डी ए एस दिस इज रिलेटेड टू द सॉलिडिफिकेशन टाइम बाई दिस फॉर्मूला एस डास इज इक्वल टू के टू दी पावर एम वेयर टी एस इज द सॉलिडिफिकेशन टाइम एंड एम एंड के आर द कॉन्स्टेंट्स विच डिपेंड्स ऑन द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ मेटल लाइक दिस इज रिटिन हियर कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ द मेटल and now we will see the seward's law so usually uh, in gate examinations uh, we see the numerical on these uh, important laws so the amount of gas that can be dissolved in molten metal is given by the seward's law so percentage of the gas dissolved in the molten metal is equal to k into under root of partial pressure of that gas so p gas is the partial pressure of the gas in contact with the metal and k is constant for which this one is the constant for uh, for a particular metal gas system increases with increasing temperature so these are the three important formulas which we use and uh, one more this is the gibbs phase rule this is the very important so gibbs developed the phase rule in 1875 and uh, 1876 so it describes the relationship between the number of components and number of phases for a given system and the condition that may be allowed to change so what are the parameters so these are the temperature and pressure these are the two parameters it has the general form of like f is equal to c minus p plus 2 this is the general uh, formula for gibbs phase rule where f is the degree of freedom or number of variables such as temperature pressure and the composition so uh, that are allowed to change independently without changing the number of phase in equilibrium that means by changing these three parameters the phase will not change and c is the number of chemically independent components usually elements or compounds in the system and p is the number of phases present so this is the composition this is the sorry this is the component and this is the phases number of phases and this is the constant parameter which is generally temperature and pressure which are allowed to change and uh, this condensed gibbs phase rule given as a f is equal to c minus p plus 1 in which case the one is taken here because most generally all the metallurgical reaction happens at a fixed pressure so here this two changes to one because pressure is fixed so this will be f is equal to c minus p plus 1 so uh, this is the formula is taken here for the condensed gibbs phase rule generally we take in case of single component system this formula f is equal to c minus p plus 2 and uh, for uh, condensed uh, system like uh, uh, binary ternary and so on we will take this f is equal to c minus p plus 1 so thank you